the farm families of Cabot Cooperative are happy to be stuck in Vermont. I made this at 3 in the morning. That has, that has a lot of value. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days. My name is Ava Solberger, and we are here at John Brickle's Pine Street Studio in the soda plant for his Mad Scientist workshop. Two hours ago, Oh, these things were just flat pieces of clay or just these little tubes and now things are just they're, they're coming together it's alive it's alive it's alive the flashing lights and the electricity that's just what does it take to be a mad scientist let's go find out thousand, thousand feet feet <laughs> workshop takes place from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. and it culminates in a robot-shaped pancake breakfast at Handy's. You don't think a mad scientist working at 12 noon, it's always in the middle of the night. So 3 a.m. is just perfectly awful <laughs> and that adds value. I am actually a night owl. I'm, I'm not awake this early in the morning. I'm tired. <sighs> Even at my age I figured yeah. I, could, I could still yeah. pull an all-nighter. Recovery time's a little slower. <laughs> It'll be wonderful to have pancakes and then take a nap. I know. I'm much needed Saturday. I'm not going to bed. Morning nap. <laughs> oh, it's really nerve wracking at first. The first hour is like, you know, what's wrong with me? But then all of a sudden it just is like kapow. We all get each other's energy. And by now, you know, we're fully awake. This is the 13th workshop. And for me, doing a workshop involves lab coats, doing mechanical things like steampunk, and then walking up to, to Handy's in our lab coats and having the Frankenstein pancakes. And what's really fun is like to tell them, like, well, they only have like an hour and a half left. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out your dead. <laughs> Thank you. Dead scraps. Thank you, sir. I have all these, these clay shapes extruded and ready to go. Everyone can put them together. And, and clay is really user-friendly. And then you have all the, the parts that get, get added on. I mean, these are off of, you know, vintage adding machines. These are from convicts. Uh, dental, it's from a dental lab. Don't bother to buy molars. It's the incisors that are a much more interesting shape to it. I'm going to have my, my um, character smile. Mm -hmm. It's going to shrink up so that the glass part won't fit in. To see John as a teacher is really amazing. He's a great teacher. He makes it look easy, yeah. and it's not. A brilliant problem solver, and a lot of us have had structural problems, so he helped us. And he's just very inspirational. What you do with the macaroni, you just press it in, and then it just burns away in the kiln. There's like a tiny, tiny V in there. It had flashing lights, I think you saw it. Right now, I'm kind of working on a laser robot. It's my first time being here. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I mean, I've been a big fan of John's. I'm Bride of Rickenstein. <laughs> I put wheels on animals and give them a little robotic look to them. I'll attach a string underneath and they'll actually pull. It's a little daunting when you first get here, because you're like, well, what am I going to do? It'd be fun to make a sort of a steampunk camera. Yours has eyes. That's great. Are you looking at me? Mm. <laughs> you get a lot of, like, biomorphic, um, Things that look mechanical, but they're organic. I kind of knew that I wanted to make an elephant. I was kind of hoping to, to make it. It definitely didn't turn out how I pictured it, but I like it. Yes, we're always amazed when they're done. And that's the neat thing about art, is that you can make whatever you want. This is my professional work. I mean, it's like the steampunk mugs. Yeah, so I was raised in Akron, Ohio, a lot of rubber factories. It was the tire capital of the world when I was a kid. You could get glimpses of, of metal sometimes and, and sparks and stuff flying as you would go by. Wow, the Wizard of Oz with, you know, steam and this and that, you know, bellowing out. Yeah, it's got a robot that's smashing down the row house. I would say my art is pretty nostalgic, you know, it's not really looking forward, it's kind of looking backward. And I like to evoke an emotion in my artwork, tug at people's heartstrings. That's why when I do buildings or barns, they're kind of leaning over. That's one of the reasons I got into robots, is because people respond to the human form. <laughs> 
keyed in on steampunk because this clay also reads well for metal. Since college, since about 1976, for about the last 20 years, full time. You know, there's enough things in the world, but I still like making things. Oh, you should see their mom. Their mom is like 14 feet high. Well, we're doing an exhibition called Time Machines, Robots, Rockets, and Steampunk. It's like custom made for me. <laughs> he has a whole back wall of his robots. And what I love about his robots are that they have a sense of humor and they also take on very human characteristics. They're very expressive. He likes you. I can <laughs> tell, look at him. He's tuning right into you. They're gonna be shaped like robots. Being able to walk up the street wearing uh -huh. so our lab coats is gonna be there. a highlight. see the sculptures behind me as well as their 14-foot mother at the Shelburne Museum's new exhibit Time Machines opening in mid-June. We'll get stuck with you again real soon. But now this mad scientist, she needs to go to bed. This is how the laser shoots out and this little person, which is a bolt person, is supposed to get Beamed by the laser.